All right, we've got secrets. People aren't telling you some of the things that are some of the disadvantages with low latency control links. In my recent series, we've been going through the advantages of the high performance, low latency control links like Ghost, ExpressLRS, Tracer. But as you reduce the latency of a control link and reduce those packets, there's a little gremlin that starts to creep in on you and that's a signal to noise ratio. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the disadvantages of having a high performance, low latency control link. So in Betaflight 4.3, you'll probably notice that on the right hand side here, you have this PID loop control settings. And under PID loop control settings, we have things like jitter reduction, smoothness, averaging, boost, max rate, and transition. But these settings definitely need to be adjusted for high performance control links, or you're actually going to have worse performance than a standard control link. Now, luckily in Betaflight 4.3, under presets, you can click under here and then you can hit this drop down and you can change these and uncheck this and look at RC links here. And then you have all these different RC link presets you can select from. So for example, if I'm gonna use Express LRS 500 Hertz, I would go ahead and click on that and there, it's in RC phase, so this is a little goofy right now, but in the stable release, this will work appropriately. And then you can hit pick and then hit save and reboot. And of course, what that will do is change the settings under the PID tab here, this PID control settings for feed forward to customize it specifically for that control link. Now what you'll notice if you do pick on those presets and go down from say the 250 to the 500 hertz packet rate, you are going to see that these numbers actually go up in some cases, most cases go up. You're gonna need to apply more smoothing and filtering because of that signal to noise ratio. So what do I mean by that? Well, at the end of the day, you are breaking up and sending, you know, you have your stick movements and you're breaking that up into um, more refined intervals to transmit that uh, over the air and how that impacts feed forward since recognizing what feed forward is feed forward is a magnitude of the slope of you know your movements that you're making well when those packets get reduced in size they have a tendency to have more jitter this is very similar to when you go from a to a higher sampling rate you know, we go from two to four to eight kilohertz. And then there was this 16 and 32 kilohertz uh, movement a while ago. And you just get a lot more noise at the higher sampling rates. Well, the same happens for low latency protocols. So you get a better uh, end to end latency. You get a smoother signal because the packets are being updated more frequently, but there is more jitter. So really the race from like express lrs ghost and and tracer if they if they reduce their their speed as well is to do it at the same time they're getting a cleaner signal and it, the bar gets higher and higher the the faster you send that signal so if you go from 250 hertz to 500 hertz or even a thousand hertz for a packet rate you really got to get that jitter down so that it doesn't defeat the purpose of chasing that that higher sampling rate and to this day, uh, Ghost and Express RLS are continuing to work on that uh, with Edge TX because it's it's the whole system. It has to be the you know the transmitter, the protocol, uh, Betaflight as well, and it's all its settings to kind of push the envelope and get that bar to where it's high performance, low latency, low end to end, and low jitter to get the best of all the worlds together. So with all that said, let's look at some logs and let's look at 50 hertz to 150 hertz to 250 hertz to 500 hertz sampling and see how just the packet rate and see how that affects our feed forward signal. So what I have here is a bunch of logs with consistent stick inputs. And you say to me, well, how did you get consistent stick inputs? Well, let me show you. So I'm proud to debut the consistent stick input Elizer 4000. And that's how we get it done. So with that technique, you can see I have a sampling rate, and these are all Express LRS 500, 250, and 150 hertz. It's the exact same setting on the flight controllers, exact same everything uh, for all the setting, the feed forward settings we just showed. And of course, the exact same input device that you can see I devised over there. The orange line up here, that is your feed forward trace. And you can see the difference between those and how at the 500 hertz sampling rate, 
you just get a lot more jitter in your feed forward signal than you do at 250 and 5, 150. And we can also take a look at that where the stick flopped back and kind of went back and forth like that. So that's a pretty rapid move. These are about twice as fast as I can actually move the stick to the right. So I can move the stick from center to the right for a fast move in about 50 to 60 milliseconds. These are about 25 milliseconds. So it's a little bit faster than um, what I would say is physically possible. But nevertheless, it shows some uh, good data on this. And you can see again how that feed forward signal just has more jitter uh, built into it, uh, you know, with the 500 hertz, 250, and then as you go down to 150 hertz, you really don't see much jitter there uh, at all. So let's take a look zoomed in here. This is at a 500 zoom on here. And let's first look at the 150 hertz. And you can see as the stick is moving down, you have feed forward way in advance. So the P term, the pushing term, basically mimics this since the, the, the flight control board just sitting on the desk, basically mimics this line for pushing to get the quadcopter to go this direction. So the P term would only really start to push here. Well, you got feed forward way in advance here, uh, starting to push the quad and push the motors as it's starting to see this go down, hence the value of feed forward. Uh, to kind of get ahead and get a jump on that P term. And it's a nice smooth, it's, you know, as this is starting to push down, feed forward is recognizing that and starting to go this direction uh, to push the quad uh, to the right-hand side, right, right roll here. And as we get to the apex here, you can see it's reversing and going the other direction. Now, at the 500 hertz sampling rate, you get this weird, uh, um, like, kind of overshoot kickback kind of a thing that where it's starting to push this direction and you can see it's, um, you know, about the same level of advancement here uh, between the two. But with this one, you have this weird kickback where it's actually pushing to, to get the quad moving this direction, which is where the sticks are going. But then it, as it gets towards center stick, it kind of kicks back it says, hey, wait, stop. And then as it passes over center stick, then it re-engages. It's almost like a, a braking. So what's that all mean? That low latency control links are worse? Well, no, you got to recall that the end-to-end -end latency was less. In most cases, five milliseconds, something of that order of magnitude. And also that the stair step of the packets is shorter, usually half, you know, two milliseconds versus four or six or eight. And so that is getting to the P term is, is quicker as well. So it's you know, feed forward, but then also the P term. Uh, so it's not worse. It's just jitter that we need to deal with. And how do we deal with those? Well, that's where these settings come into play. Now, again, luckily in Betaflight 4.3, you're going to have presets. I can't underemphasize how important it will be if you have a low latency, high performance control link to come into these presets, pick which one you have and apply it. That will get these settings over here all set up for you and you'll be set to go. What you will end up seeing is that as your high performance control link, the higher the performance the control link is, you will see these numbers start to go up. In those presets, there's options for race, freestyle, cinematic, so make sure you check those out as well. Obviously, race is gonna have the least amount of jitter uh, control and smoothness to it. It's gonna be for sharp inputs and fast, fast motions, trying to get the latency as low as possible and it's not necessarily really concerned about smoothness at all. Whereas your freestyle or HD are gonna bump these up, keeping in mind you might be able to be a little bit smoother on the sticks as you're trying to get that mint HD footage. Okay, well that is it. Hopefully you enjoyed that run through of some of the disadvantages of the high performance, low latency control links. If you are interested in some more details about jitter reduction, smoothing, averaging, please do check out the Patreon. I'll have a follow-up video this week going through each of those settings and showing how they affect your flight performance uh, and taking a look at the logs and actually showing what the difference is in the feed forward traces, uh, again, as we adjust each of those settings. Jitter reduction reduces the feed forward when the sticks are moving slowly, regardless of their position. Now, next up is feed forward smoothness. So this is a low pass filter on feed forward itself. So it's gonna smooth out the feed forward signal. And you can see here, it also reduces the jitter, the low end jitter from a smooth movement, but it has more reduction in some of the feed forward jitter spikes that we had with in, in faster movements. That means that feed forward with just using jitter reduction when you're moving slow, 
it will reduce jitter. But when you have fast movements, it's not going to delay your feed forward signal. Whereas if you use feed forward smoothing, it's going to delay the feed forward signal a little bit more for those fast movements as well, because it's going to be smoothing both. But I'm hopeful the most important thing that everybody walks away with, if you have a high performance controlling, please do apply those presets. It is really important to make these tweaks in FeedForge settings to really optimize that investment you've made in those additional performance links. With that, thanks everybody. I hope this helps.